I welcome you all to the last day session of the National Children's Science Congress 2010. On behalf of the organizing committee of the National Children's Science Congress, I welcome you all to this session of interaction with uh, Professor Venkatraman Ramakrishnan of Cambridge University. It's my pleasure and privilege to introduce Professor Venkatraman Ramakrishnan. He was born in 1952 in uh, Chidambaram, Kadalur district of Tamil Nadu, and did his schooling and uh, undergraduate studies in Vadodara, where he studied in uh, MS University. Then he went on to do his PhD in the United States, and uh, he has held a number of positions, and for the last 10 years, he has been in, at Cambridge University. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work on ribosomes last year, in 2009. He was also <laughs> awarded the Padma Vibhushan by the Government of India this year. <laughs> Among other important prizes, I should also mention the Louis Jante Prize for Medicine in 2007, an important European honor. Good morning, everybody. I, I just want to say a few things uh, that I see as trends in India today. Today, if a child in India is bright, their parents want them to do mainly engineering, medicine, management, and so on. Many people go into engineering, but they don't even want to become engineers. They're using engineering only as a stepping stone to go into management. How many managers does India need compared to engineers or actual workers? It's, any organization is like a pyramid. You need a lot of workers who are actually developing new products and making them, and you only need a few managers. So if everybody becomes managers, that's not a successful way to build an economy. It says, there are people called psychics, I'm not sure of that spelling, who are known to foresee things. Is this true? What causes them to visualize things beforehand? I can tell you, I do not believe in psychics, and I don't believe in astrologers. I believe one of the big curses of India is belief in astrology. And it's a sad thing, it's a sad thing when even politicians believe in astrology. And I can tell you it's a very dangerous thing because if you know who the astrologer is of some big politician, you could easily influence that astrologer to make some predictions that might benefit you and then the politician will do what the astrologer says. This is complete nonsense. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, I suggest you do the following. Every New Year's Day, astrologers will predict what happens in the next year. Now, some of them will be bogus. That means the prediction will be so general that it's impossible to say whether it's true or not. You know, they'll say people will be happier or people will be this. You know, you can't say that, okay? But once in a while, they'll make specific predictions. They'll say so-and-so will become this or so-and-so will die, etc. Collect all of those, then wait for a year until the next year has passed and then read them and see if they've come true, okay? When you do that, you'll see that except for the vague predictions which had no answer, whenever they make specific predictions, they'll be mostly random. That means some of them will be true and some of them will be false. It'll be like flipping a coin, okay? It's no better than flipping a coin. Now, what these astrologers do is, on a random basis, some of them will come true. So then they'll say, see, I predicted that. But that's just on a random basis. Because I can say, I can make a prediction, okay? I can predict that Sachin Tandunkar will score a century in the next test match, okay? Now, there's some chance that he'll score a century. There's some chance that he won't score a century. If he doesn't score a century, nobody will remember it. If he scores a century, they'll say, oh, Ramakrishnan can foresee something. He, can, he's, he predicted that Tandunkar will score a century. So that's how astrology works. So please don't believe it, okay? You will not... You will not progress as a country unless you stop these superstitions. 
This is an interesting question from Raval Bharat. I think it says Bharati from Gujarat. In the present world, there's a trend for tutors of every subject. Is it good for us or bad? My feeling, and Amartya Sen has said this very clearly, is I don't think there should be any tuition or tutors. Because, first of all, what these people do is teach very narrowly for an exam. They're not encouraging people, young children, to think broadly about uh, the world, about history, geography, and so on. They're simply trying to coach them for a joint entrance exam or some, some other exam. This is not a way to produce uh, good, educated people of the future. The other bad thing which Amartya Sen pointed out is that having tutors, again, increases the gap between rich people who can afford tuition and tutors and poor people who cannot afford those. And that, again, is not good for society as a whole. So I can tell you that I never had any tuition when I was growing up. In fact, my parents would never have agreed, even if I wanted to have tutors. They would not have agreed, okay? They would rather that I did a little less well in class than have uh, tutors, okay? And it has not hurt me in the long run. I've done perfectly fine. Even if I had not got the Nobel Prize, I would still have been a very productive scientist. So it's not necessary to have tuition. I think it's a terrible way to educate a child. So I'm told that there's now we have to stop because we're going to give awards to the people who have been selected for their projects. So I hope you found this question answer session interesting and thank you very much. As I wanted to say that we have selected 30 projects to, to be specially recognized. It is, it is always very difficult to select best when the technical sessions are being held in different parallel sessions. Still, we try to minimize our error and identify 30 child scientists. I will call the child scientists by name in alphabetical order, not in the order of merit. They should come and receive the citation from our respected Nobel laureate.